So if you've ever seen in movies where a cyber attack takes out the infrastructure, or like in the TV series show Mr. Robot where hacking wipes out all the financial debt, or in the most recent movie by Netflix, Leave the World Behind, where a cyber attack brings down the entire US and reigns in pure anarchy. First stage was isolation. Disable their communication and transportation. Make the target as deaf, dumb, and paralyzed as possible, and setting them up for the second stage. Synchronized chaos. It's kind of scary. Well, what if it's happening in real life right now? At least it is in Fulton County. Let's jump into it. Today, we are facing an unprecedented array of data breaches, hacking attempts, and surges in digital crime. Why is there such a widespread amount and how little is noticed in our everyday lives? Malware, dark sites, brute forcing, zero days, script kitties, and nation state hackers are all on the rise. Learn more about the threats we face and gain a bit more knowledge than yesterday. Hey everyone, another episode of Exploit Brokers is coming to you now. So, in an article by Dark Reading, Fulton County suffers power outages as cyber attack continues. County services have come to a halt and are not expected to return are not expected to resume until next week. No threat actor has been yet identified. Has yet been identified. We have been hearing about data breaches. We've been hearing about malware. We've been hearing about businesses and commercial. What happens when government comes down? Well, that's what we're going to be talking about um, as it continues. As Fulton County in Georgia continues to experience a cyber attack and a power outage, government systems are offline and it's unknown when they'll be operational again. Court filings, tax processing, and other services, including phone and internet service, as well as the court system website, are reportedly also not functioning as usual. You have major infrastructure from what it seems. You have your power out. You have court filings, tax, phone, internet services seem to be offline. The court system's offline. You know, that can bring in just pure chaos. If your court dates for civil and criminal traffic cases just get backed up even further without phone and internet communication start to break down, you know, tax processing and other services that are necessary for the legal bureaucracy to be able to play its hand is pretty much down because of a cyber attack. And they haven't even been able to pin it to a um, APT or advanced persistent threat actor. It's one of those instances that really makes you like take a double take, right? It's the kind of stuff out of a movie almost. It says, at this time, we are not aware of any transfer of sensitive information about citizens or employees but we will continue to look carefully at this issue, said county official Rob Pitts. He also noted that there was a preliminary investigation, but the breach has uh, caused a significant disturbance in the county, so on and so forth. What ultimately is going on, right? There is a cyber attack that is now being felt in the infrastructure. There's been multiple cases over the past couple of years of hackers breaking in to critical infrastructure. I believe there was even a paid pen test that went viral on YouTube. Um, at least I think it was paid. Um, and they literally broke into a power substation. No alarms, nothing. Um, I think they broke a lock and they were in or something like that. It, it was simple. If they didn't use any tools or they might have just used some simple tools. But that's it. They were able to just walk in, no alarms, no reports, nothing. And that was the stage of that. Well, what happens when you have nation states that want to take down uh, critical infrastructure like power, gas, right? There was ransomware attack that took down a major pipeline a few years back. A lot of these businesses, a lot of these government organizations are not set up in a way that is fault tolerant to cyber attacks. It's not if you'll be attacked. It's when will you be attacked, right? It's you're going to get hit. You're going to be a target at some point. We've seen water plants get hit with malware. We've seen them get hit by ransomware. We've seen them get hit by pretty much almost everything. We've seen power companies also hit by act, uh, by threat actors. Some, you know, emulation like the pen testers and others, you know, things that probably haven't disclosed, but I'm pretty sure floating around. 
and government systems. I mean, military websites and all that are probably under siege all the time. It's becoming a modern problem, modern cyber problem, because everything's connected now. Your fridge is connected to the internet. Your government is connected to the internet. The government's fridge is connected to the internet, right? It's not going away. There has to be better systems in place. There has to be a better backup plan in place. There has to be better risk mitigation in place. Firewalls, alert systems, monitoring that have to be in place, not just at a business level. Businesses have a responsibility to protect their customers' data, their employee data. But the governments have the government, really all governments all over the world, but the government in this case, Fulton County, has a responsibility to its citizens to protect itself so it can deliver electricity, so it can deliver legal services or the court services anyways. It has to be able to operate because that is what it's for. The government is created there not to you know, not to be our boss of every day, but to protect us, to enforce laws. And if they don't have power, if they don't have all that, because we're getting hit by a cyber attack, well, what is a cyber attack any more than just a digital version of crime or a digital version of cyber war or of a war, really? And the government should be better equipped. Um, you have plenty of private and commercial people that have better response to this kind of thing than the government does and that's kind of that shouldn't be the case a large government organization or a government organization in this case fulton county should have plans right the state should have plans the fed should have plans it's again it's not a matter of if an organization or entity entity will get hacked or will get breached or will get a ransomware it's a matter of when the clock is ticking. doesn't matter what organization you are, how big, how small, have a plan. Because stuff like this is going to happen. Granted, because it's a government, because this government controls so many things, them getting hit by a cyber attack and not having a plan is ultimately causing pure chaos. So to the folks in Fulton County, I really hope the best for you. And I hope the government can get this under control, whether that's through some government agency coming in, stepping in to help them out, or them figuring out what's going on. Because if, if this is a nation state, which very well could be, they haven't identified a threat actor yet. But if it's a nation state, you're talking about an entire nation fighting against one county in one state. That's a pretty significant power difference if you will because the nation state's going to have a lot more resources and a lot more expertise and skill backing up an attack than i figure fulton county will have in defending against said attack so i hope they figure out what's going on and i hope if it's something bigger that you can have a more skilled agency or a more, more skilled set of people whether it's private, commercial, or government, can step in to get some order and services restored. People shouldn't have to be in the dark, literally, because of this kind of stuff. Let's move on to the next article. So in yet another article by Dark Reading, POC exploits heightened risk around critical new Jenkins vuln. The arbitrary file read flaw can lead to remote code execution. So what is Jenkins? If you've ever seen a little logo that looks like a butler, it's kind of a cool logo, um, that is Jenkins. Jenkins is a, a developer or DevOps automation tool that lets you do CICD or continuous integration, continuous delivery or continuous deployment, depending on how, how you like to look at it. And what it does is it automates, right? So it lets you push up your code and it might build an image or it might run tests or it might build and run tests and deploy out to a server depending on how you have it configured a lot of agencies or a lot of companies have it where okay you push something up and when you push that thing up a bunch of tests will run and it'll build right so it'll build and tests will run and if the tests are happy and everything's okay then you can push that into say a master or a main branch and once you have it in there then 
it might automatically deploy out to like a development environment or a staging environment for people to test with or play with. And then once people are happy with that, you can even have it where it'll deploy to a production environment where the end users or end clients can get access to it. Now, as we go down, some 45,000 internet exposed Jenkins servers remain unpatched against the critical recently discovered arbitrary file read vulnerability for which proof of exploit code is now publicly available. CVE-2024-23897 affects the built-in Jenkins command line interface or CLI and can lead to remote code execution on affected systems. The Jenkins infrastructure team disclosed the vulnerability and released updated version software on January 24th. So I'm currently recording this on January 31st at night and they released that a brand new updated version on January 24th. So this is now a couple days later. And to kind of break down everything that I just read, a proof of exploit code or a POC essentially is a piece of code that shows how and actually can exploit a vulnerability or a bug, right? So in this case, a arbitrary file read vulnerability, that is any kind of bug that lets you read any file you'd want on the system, right? So if you want to try to read the password file, if you want to try to read the internet or the WW files that they have publicly available, or you want to read a user files or whatever's on the machine, depending on what level of access the, what level of access that the quote unquote user that this is running under, that Jenkins is running under, then you know, this could open up some very, very bad situations. And as we read forward a little bit, it'll actually come to that. So the CV itself takes advantage of it. And in some instances can lead to remote code execution on affected systems. It depends on how it's set up. So moving on, on January 29th, the nonprofit shadow server organization, which monitors the internet for malicious activity, reported observing around 45,000 internet exposed instances of Jenkins that are vulnerable to CVE-2024-23897. Nearly 12,000 of the vulnerable instances are located in the US. China has almost as many vulnerable systems according to shadow server data. So this nonprofit is pretty much keeping an eye on everything shadow server. I have to look them up at some point, but they said, Hey, there's around 45,000 instances. So 45,000 Jenkins instances that are running a unpatched version of Jenkins. When you patch Jenkins, that means you've updated it to the latest one. The developers have fixed this vulnerability. And until something else is found with the current version, then that's just the version that you jump to. Um, so there's at least 12,000 in the U S that means there's 12,000 instances of this. You could argue that there might be 10,000 organizations, 12,000 or organizations. I doubt it's a one-to-one, -one, but let's, let's say it's one-to-one, -one, right? That means you have 12,000 companies whose servers could get owned because or their infrastructure, their apps, their software, their their products, depending on what their Jenkins is set up to do, could get owned. And I say it could get owned because with arbitrary file read, it could they could read keys, they can read signing stuff, they could read uh, secrets that no one should be able to read for production. They can read anything that they shouldn't be able to read. So uh, there is a workaround currently. If you are unable to patch it, the Jenkins team is saying that you should disable the CLI. And disabling the CLI is essentially the best workaround outside of updating and patching it. Now, there is some concerns for RCE or remote code execution. After just a little bit of digging, there's a couple different ways you can get to it, but ultimately it involves you trying to read and using the read functionality as a way to trigger some kind of payload that was uploaded somewhere else. So let's say that the Jenkins, you find Jenkins and that server also allows you to upload something. Well, if you can upload a script that can possibly be used to trigger a download from somewhere else, there's a few different vulnerabilities. I'd have to really think about it, but say you could do that, right? And downloading that downloads a payload, which then lets you execute something. 
Well, now you can read from it with the arbitrary file read and boom, you've taken two pieces of an attack, uploading something and then triggering that via a, you know, a read, which would cost maybe a download or something. And that would then give you RCE. Now you've uh, pwned the system. Not only can you read secrets and all this, but you can run code. So if you have the ability to uh, patch it, because that is going to be the best bet. And if you don't, disable the client, and that'll at least be a good intermittent step. Guys, this one is very technical, and that's just kind of a high-level overview. But if you know a company or a buddy that tends to run Jenkins, uh, send them this video so that way they know to patch their stuff. This has been Exploit for another episode, and I will see you in the next one.